Question number 10 is to classify sampling methods and identify bias in samples and survey questions. Sampling. This is another interesting topic. It's about statistics. Here you need to understand and differentiate what means what. As say, for example, we will just look into the important type of samples. There is simple, random, systematic, self-selected, convenient, stratified. It is so important that you understand the difference because sometimes if you're not thorough with this, you will be very much confused. Now, I will explain each one of them and then we will solve the problems. First, I will tell you what is stratified because this is a very important one and easy to understand also. Stratified is something as the name suggests, stratified, like layers, you know, layers, stratified, stratification. This means there is some groupings made and then you are picking things. Say, for example, I have answer sheets of different grades. First, I'll group them in different grades. Not answer sheets. Say I'm taking a survey from all my cycle three students. And first, I will group them in different grades, grade 9, 10, 11, 12. And then I pick, say, five from here, five responses from here, here and over here. This is stratified. Why? Because I have overlapped the group done, overlapping groups data. This is stratifying, making groups and selecting. Whereas convenience over here means it is very convenient to choose and that's the only reason you're choosing. That is readily available. Now say imagine I am, uh, I want a survey and I'm teaching my grade 11 students. And then I, I need to do it with the cycle three. But since I'm teaching the grade 11 student, these are convenient. I only give grade 11 students to survey. This is about my convenience. Whereas self-selected is something like a volunteering. You know, say you go to the canteen and over there, there is, uh, uh, you know, surveys, survey questions written. Which food do you prefer? It's not forceful. It's just optional if you want on the way to buy something you can just fill up the form and submit it it's just volunteering volunteering they're not asking you but you can volunteer to do it that's sort of self selected systematic is something that happens in a specified interval say there are you know there are about um, 30 students in my grade 12 class so what i do is I don't want all the 30 is too big, big of a number to do a study. So I will select all the third student the randomly the third repeating student or the multiple of three. So after three, I'll next one, I'll select a sixth, ninth, twelfth. at a regular interval. I'm choosing a student. So th that's that's the uh, you know, this is specified interval, you know, at every third uh, student I'm going to select. So this is called a systematic because you have a specific timed interval, you know. So that's why it says systematic. And then the first one over here, which we did the last, is simple random. This is basically, you know, randomly you're selecting. There is no order or nothing. This is completely unbiased as well. You're randomly selecting. There is no uh, bias in this, just random. Now with that in mind, let's quickly go through these problems here. First one. We need to identify each sample and suggest the population for which it was selected. Then classify the sample as simple, random, systematic, self-selected, convenience or stratified. These are the ones which we just saw. Okay. Now, this is another thing. There's a population and the sample. We will look into a problem. Burton divides a sports t-shirt by team. Then he randomly selects four t-shirts from which each team and records the size. Now, this one you can see he is sorting it out by team and then randomly selecting. If you go back, we can understand it's stratified, isn't it? Look here, members are selected from similar overlapping groups. It's already grouped into teams and then randomly selected. The answer is definitely stratified. Now, where is the answer? Uh, oh, here you can see the answer is stratified. That is the survey that is the type of the survey but what about the sample and the population the sample means what has been selected now if i want say uh, 50 to uh, 50 responses for a survey 
I will give all my cycle 3 students. Okay, so all my cycle 3 students, I, I need the response from them. Okay, that is 9, 10, 11th and 12th. So all these students combined as the population, these all are my population. That means these are the ones who I can select, uh, uh, you know, use the research or the, you know, the survey from. I can ask any one of them. But which is the sample? The ones who are selected, I need only 50 responses. So the 50 students who are selected are the sample. Same way over here, the t-shirt by team, he, you know, he is dividing, right? The t-shirt button selects, they are the sample. Whereas the population is all the bot, uh, his buttons, sports t-shirts. Because whichever is sports t-shirts are they, he is selecting them randomly, right? Sorting them randomly. So basically, Whichever has been selected is the sample, but all the possible t-shirts which you have are the population. Now, similarly, the next one over here, the project manager at a new business inspects every 10th smartphone produced to check that is open or that is operating correctly. Now, when it's 10th or 5th or 6th or any particular interval, this is systematic. We can check over here. There is a specified interval. So it's systematic. Now here, this is systematic. Now the selected, what is the sample? Every 10 smartphone. That is basically the every 10 smartphone which has been selected is the sample. And what is the population? All that is being produced in that particular company, which, which is he selecting? He's selecting all the you know phones which are produced by the company, but he's not selecting all, he's just selecting the 10. So whichever is being selected is the sample. All the uh, mobile phones, uh, you know, the phones which are produced by the company are the population. Population means they can be selected. So that's the thing. Imagine there is one more company which produces something else. The, uh, produces phone but some other company. That is not population because they are not going to be inspected in the study, right? Only the ones from this company. That's it. Now here there are few one more problem. Please try to pause the video and try solving this by yourselves. Here it is about a grocery store manager asking uh, its customers to submit suggestions for the items on salad salad bar during the week. Okay, so during uh, for salad, which all the you know items which are required. Now here it's important to know grocery store asking the asking is customers so we can see here it is not forced on to anyone it is basically asking you say for example i'm on the street and i'm asking people can you give me your suggestion about something it's voluntary if they want they can otherwise they can they can just go away or not give it so here it is important to understand this is not a survey or anything it's a, it's a voluntary thing so this is voluntarily uh, the first option over here, which we had self-selected. So it's self-selected because it's only the customers and if they voluntarily want to include, then only. And what is the sample? Whoever is taking the survey is the sample, obviously. And all the customers who are coming to this particular shop are the uh, population. So you can see the customers who submit suggestions are the sample because they did it. The population is all possible customers. Those who are not coming, they won't even have the chance. So they are not even in the population. Whereas this is self-selected because they are voluntarily submitting suggestions. Now the second part over here, the question number four onwards, we have to see whether it's biased or unbiased. Let's read this problem first. A random sample of eight people is asked to select their favorite food for a survey about America's food preference. Um, now see, it is a random sample, yes. But they are, they are talking about Americans' food preferences. It's the whole country's food preferences and how many people are being asked? Eight people. Does it make any sense? Not at all because there are so many millions of people and you're just asking eight people for the entire country's, you know, uh, food preference, which doesn't make sense at all. Maybe they don't even like, uh, you know, they might say some unique food, which the whole country won't even like it, you know. So this is not at all a proper sample. There must be more number of people. This is biased. Okay. It's too small to represent uh, the entire population. Okay. So that's the thing because only eight people are there. 
Now, every 10 student at band camp is asked to name his or her favorite band for the survey about campus. Here, uh, this every 10 student, this is a, not, not at all biased because you're randomly choosing the 10 student. There is random, you know, so that is a good thing because it's unbiased over here. Every 10 student at a band camp is asked to name his or her favorite band for a survey about campus. So you're just basically asking random students every 10. So it doesn't, uh, you know, uh, it's it's unbiased, basically. It's unbiased, yes, because they're randomly selected because every 10 student and the sample is selected at a band camp and does not influence the response of selected. Oh, yeah, there's also one important thing. You know, they're asking you your favorite band for campus. See, there is no uh, any, they're just random students over there in a camping. They're just being asked, so it's fine, you know. You're not representing anything else, so that's fine. This is unbiased at all. And over here, the sixth one, every fifth person entering a museum is asked to name his or her favorite type of book to read for a survey about reading peep interests, reading interests of people in the city. Now, look over here. Uh, the What is the reason why, why they're asking? They're asking for a survey about reading interests of people in the city, in the entire city. What do the people like? And who are they asking? Every fifth person in a museum. So only the ones who are going to museum are being surveyed. Now, if you have uh, noticed, people who like museums will have different types of interests, you know. Now, say, for example, people who go to water park or people who go to trekking or other adventures, they all have their different interests or different book reads or booklets. So here it wouldn't make a, uh, it would, it, this would be a bias because you're just asking people from museum for the interest of the entire city, you know. So this wouldn't be a proper way to ask. You should ask in different places, not only museum, go to schools, go to camps or fairs or book fairs, different places, you know. So this is bias because museum is a weird, you know, likely to attract people of specific interest. So you will only get that specific interest here. Try to pause the video and try to think about these by yourselves. Let's look at these. Seventh one is, do you think about the workout facility, uh, that the workout facility needs a new treadmill and racquetball court? So here, it's again by us. Look, they are specifically asking. It's a workout facility. All these sports gym equipments can be there. But you're specifying only two, treadmill and racquetball, racquetball court. So this is biased. You should not specify anything. So it's biased. Yes. Asking about two issues. Okay. Not other things. So it's specifying. Bias is something where you influence the question and influence the answer. That's basically it. You know. So this is a bias because you're specifying these two. The eighth question here they are asking which is your favorite type of music? Pop or country? Now, this is again a bias question. For example, I, I like rock music. Now, yeah, there is no option of rock. You know, sometimes some people like jazz. Some people like, say, a country. Country is mentioned. Or different ones, classical, heavy metal, or different ones, you know. So, we are specified only two genres of music, which is biased. They have not mentioned any other genres. If you just, uh, just ask, what is your favorite type of music? Or which genre is your favorite type of music? That's it. That would be unbiased. But since you specified this pop and country is specified here, it's biased. You can use only two options. That's the reason. Now, are you a member of any after school club? See, now this one is unbiased. Why? Are you a member of any after school clubs? Any. You know, they're not mentioning anything specific. Are you, you know, part of any one? So it's not at all biased over here. That's unbiased. And don't you agree that employees should pack their lunch? Now, this is also biased. Whenever you tell, don't you agree? Do you think these are biasing questions because you are implying this? Now, don't you agree that employees should pack their lunch? That means you're telling you feel they should pack their lunch and you want someone to agree to your opinion, which is wrong. So this is, not, uh, this is also unbiased. Because you should never include the word, don't you agree, or, or all these, which you, you know, influence the question. So this is bias because 
this encourages a certain response, right? Don't you agree? Always, uh, that's the reason. Now that's the end of this uh, topic. It's just to understand there's no problems to solve. Just make sure you understand the difference, why, where. So read the questions properly. Each point is very important and then go to your final conclusion. And one more thing for the first part, understand what are the different types of samples. Read the questions, try to figure it out. And then, uh, you know, understanding the keywords, then select the correct answer.